everybody. Uh, this is a quick audition uh, guide for those of you uh, auditioning for the Houston Youth Symphony Philharmonia. Um, <clears throat> your excerpt this year is from Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony, Second Movement. Uh, but first, there's a couple of general uh, tips that I can give for auditioning overall, no matter what repertoire you're playing. Uh, or even even for performing, this is this is what um, the judges will be listening for. Uh, first of all, the most important thing you must have at all times when when playing the horn or any instrument uh, for an audition or otherwise is a good sound. That's sort of the uh, it's your first impression. It's the quality that pervades every part of your preparation. So playing with a beautiful sound at all times is. Uh, incredibly important. Um, obviously, with this excerpt in particular, we have a marked tempo that uh, they are requesting. So make sure that you practice to be up to that tempo, of course. Uh, and then lastly, there's all of the musical details in this excerpt um, that we want to, we want the judges to know that we understand uh, and can deliver as a musician. Uh, let's start talking about this excerpt in particular. Something that's uh, particularly tricky about this excerpt is that there are a lot of moments where you are the main melody, you're kind of the, the foreground uh, in, in the orchestration, and there are other times where you are simply an accompaniment. It's really important in an audition uh, at a high level to show that you know where these spots are. Uh, so um, it's it's generally pretty easy to tell with with this excerpt. Uh, it's very obvious that we're sort of the main attraction at uh, rehearsal M, where it's marked forte. So I would make that the peak, the the point at which you have the biggest sound, and you are playing uh, with good musicianship and playing with a big phrase. And some of the other moments you're going to uh, show that you know that the horn is not the soloist during those portions. Uh, as with anything, when you're preparing something new, if this is a new piece for you, you need to start at a tempo that is slow enough that you can play through without stopping the entire excerpt uh, with all of the uh, dynamics with the marked articulations and any other uh, musical details that you need to represent. So we need to pick a nice slow tempo when we're learning this excerpt for the first time that allows us to uh, meet all of those criteria. And then we will take that, uh, that product and work it up to the tempo that we wanna perform it at. Uh, something that is a little tricky about this excerpt is also the time signature. Especially while playing alone, you're going to be you're going to have to be very diligent about managing uh, your inner metronome. Um, but for for practice purposes, use an actual metronome, obviously. Okay, so um, make sure it's set to if you have a five four setting, that's great. Otherwise, just keep a single a single beat so that you don't throw yourself off with a a four four metronome pattern when really you need five. Uh, one way that I would approach starting this if I had never worked on it before is to go and find a good recording or three good recordings. Find this segment in the music inside the recording and listen to it kind of over and over again and get a feel for how the horn fits into the orchestra. Uh, for example, uh, some of these some of these moments kind of, Kind of leap out of the texture and some are really just kind of in the background so important again to represent that you understand those details uh, in your audition really if you if you stick very diligently to the very specifically marked dynamics in this you'll be uh, you'll be doing great so first off let's let's start at a nice slow tempo nice and under uh, like 144 is So maybe we start around here. Bum, bing, bing, bum, just like that. Two, one, two, three. 
So that's that's how I would begin uh, just working on making sure that I know the notes, that I'm working on uh, matching the right articulations. Uh, if you find it difficult to play all these these kinds of leaps with uh, with breaks in between, play them all legato connected as if there are no rests between them. And then when you go back to playing with the actual articulation, I want you to uh, experiment with uh, how, how can I keep, how, how can you keep your support, your air support active, even when the short notes have gaps in between. So really like your air support is going to be consistently um, holding up your, holding up your sound, even if you're not playing. Still engaged down here uh, in my stomach or around my around my diaphragm. I'm I am kind of pressurizing my lungs so that I have that air pressure ready to go instead of letting all that tension go and then picking it back up again. So it really does feel like just playing uh, a nice legato phrase. Um, obviously, after that, we have some. Uh, there's a lot of two. It's uh, this this five four breaks down into. Um, sorry, the, the five four time signature you can kind of see will break down into groups of threes and twos. Uh, it's it's usually pretty clear just from just from looking at it where you have like a tied pair of notes and then a dotted half. That's two and then three. So uh, do a lot of listening for this. Do a lot of uh, slow practice and be really diligent about counting out your rests accurately. We don't want to drop rests in between, even though it can be a little awkward in 5-4. So uh, be really uh, mindful of that. Uh, lastly, um, uh, so we have, we have kind of a, a dynamic range from mezzo piano to forte uh, with, a, with just a moment of fortissimo near uh, one, two, three, four, the fourth bar of M. Uh, obviously, we don't want to make our, our rule number one is you got to make a good sound. So we're not trying to play so quietly that uh, we get a thin sound. We want to be supporting our air even when we're playing quietly. And uh, as uh, at the other end of the spectrum at fortissimo, we're not playing with a nasty sound. We're not overblowing. We need uh, a nice warm, healthy sound with uh, a little bit of brassiness in it to show that you know that it's a little bit more than forte at that point. You're playing all alone, trying to represent the sound of a whole section. So nice and nice and big sound, uh, as warm as you can make it, and add that brassiness uh, using using lots of uh, lots of wind uh, will will serve you very well. So happy practicing. Keep those keep those metronomes clicking and be uh, be diligent about working, uh, starting slow and then working up to tempo so that you have a highly accurate version of this excerpt that you can deliver every time and make your audition video recording experience a lot smoother. All right. Good luck, everybody. <laughs>